Welcome to October in the Journal of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. The hot topics in plastic surgery we will be discussing this month include the role of acellular dermal matrices, hypertrophic scars, and new evidence on the way fat should be processed for transfer. The first hot topic looks at the effects of fenestrating or cutting holes in ADMs to see if they decrease the incidence of capsular contracture in implant-based breast reconstruction. This manuscript retrospectively reviewed all fenestrated ADM-assisted implant-based breast reconstructions done by two senior authors over a minimum of one year follow-up. In this small study of 30 patients, it was shown that even though some were smokers and some had irradiation and the complications were limited, the authors found that there was no clinically significant Baker's three or four capsule contractures in any of these reconstructions. The real challenge in plastic surgery is if these alloderm-based dermal matrices truly have a role in decreasing capsule contracture. It has been seen and shown in multiple presentations and studies that potentially it may do so by providing a gap in where the capsule can form. However, long-term prospective studies are needed, certainly more than five years in follow-up, to see whether it indeed does minimize capsule contracture long-term. Of course, the journal will eagerly await such studies. Our next hot topic looks at some novel ways that plastic surgeons are processing fat prior to transfer. The authors evaluated fat harvesting techniques using a systematic review of the literature conducted using Ovid Medline in January 2015. Nine articles met the criteria for randomized control trials, clinical studies, or comparative evaluations in one of several techniques, either decanting, cotton gauze, telfer rolling, centrifuging, washing, infiltration, or stromal vascular fraction isolation. The limitations of the data made it impossible for the authors to evaluate one technique to being superior to the other. They did conclude that novel automated technologies may hold promise in large volume fat grafting and extensive research is certainly required to understand their true identity and efficacy. The challenge in assessing fat transfer science has been exemplified by this study. We have not been able to show whether the, whole, the role of harvesting, processing, or placement of fat has any evidence-based medicine that's significant to show that one technique or technology is better than the other. And it certainly should be done in a more scientific, prospective manner. And I, and I would strongly urge all of us in plastic surgery to take a more scientific-based approach in looking at fat transfers, having a control and an experimental method to look at these because what we have seen is basically no one can really discern one technique from another in either large or small volume settings. Another hot topic is the role of photodynamic therapy and is it effective or not against hypertrophic scars? The authors subjected fibroblasts isolated from human hypertrophic scar specimens to photodynamic therapy and measured them under fluorescent microscopy. The authors found that there was a loss of cell viability that was attributed mainly to the presence of apoptosis and its related pathways, and TGF-beta-1 mediated through signaling. And these may be important factors in predicting and evaluating treatment outcomes. As you can see from these hot topics, innovations in plastic surgery are always very important. I strongly encourage you to read PRS. Come visit us on the journal website or get the app. And we look forward to seeing you in Boston at the Plastic Surgery The Meeting. Enjoy the fall.